Landscape Artist of the Year. This is Season 5, Episode 8. This is going to be both the finals and I will also reveal who won the competition. And that's all I'll say at this point. I hope you're not as disappointed as I am at the end. Let's get started. And this is a recap, so if you want to watch the whole episode, you can find it on, I think they have it on Hulu now this season, and also on uh, YouTube, but, uh, but you won't find it on Prime Video. There, right, right there, are our semi-finalists. They were selected from the last episode, and I just wanted to refresh our memory because, uh, so this is who we have. Only one will be the winner. I know who I prefer, and we'll leave it there. Now, where they're going to paint today is Battersea at night. This is a fortress-like looking structure, which is in London. I think they've turned it into some kind of shopping center now. It's kind of iconic, I guess, if you live in London, um, as a power station, I think, is what it was originally. It's enormous, and our painters have to paint this at night. This is about as unsavory a subject as I would ever want to choose. I find paintings of things at night extremely difficult anyway, which I understand why they did. You know, they want to challenge their artists, but... Uh, but that combined with the actual setting uh, looks like pure misery to me because I like I like color. <laughs> I like color, and um, and that's not what this is going to be about today. All right, here is our first finalist. Here's the painting. She's with the painting that she did in order to be accepted onto the program, which was of course a landscape. You submit a landscape, and then. If they judge that they want you to be on the program, then you are selected. So this is her entry. And for some reason, because these are not um, commercial, these episodes now are not on Prime Video or a commercial site, I wasn't able to get a, I wasn't able to download this episode. But this is the painting that won her episode, which was of this um, sort of canal system that exists in Britain with these very strange structures. And that's as much as I, information as I could get. Um, the next thing that we have is this is the painting that she did for the, which won her semifinals um, with the other three artists today. It's very monochromatic. They were on the coast of Scotland on a gray day uh, with a gray sky, gray ocean, looking at a black structure. So that's, that's hard. Here is her final entry. This is the Battersea entry. And... Um, you know, certainly accurate. Um, this is so hard because we know the, the, the source material was, was difficult. Here we'll get some close-ups so we can get a better look at, at the work. You know, I really wish that those little red lights were more red. She's not a colorist. She's really into forms, into kind of large forms. So that's what we kind of guessed from the previous, the work that we've seen. So here's some slices of the Battersea entry that she did for these uh, finals. And, you know, um, I can't really say that any one of these particular slices is, is very exciting, but we have to remember what she was given to do. It's uh, really, really a difficult subject. And I think... I think she did a great job. I think everybody did a great job, of course. But, um, but you know, how many people want to have a painting of Battersea on their walls? Well, uh, that's a bit of a legitimate question, I think. And anyway, um, this is, I think this is about is as good as it gets. I mean, you, 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 you know, she showed up, she got the job done. It's a real study in grays. And so was what she was looking at. Now on the left, we have the painting that won her episode. And then we have the painting on the right that she did today in order to be in the finals. And we'll see whether or not she's revealed as the winner or not. We do not know. One more look at the piece. It's, it's fairly good size. Again, they only have four hours, remember? It's, it's a very short time, and that's a lot of uh, canvas to cover. Here's our next semi-finalist, and she's been a favorite of mine from the very first stroke she put on a piece of canvas. I am absolutely in love with her. I think she's a colorist. When you look at the distant hills, 
oh my gosh, that's so well done. This whole painting could have been gray. I mean, it could have been, but she didn't. She pushed color where she saw it. Um, just consider for a minute that uh, red building on the left. Put your thumb up and get rid of that red building and the painting doesn't sing. And in order for that to happen, everything else had to be neutralized and she had to make an exquisite decision and she did. Now the painting that she did that won her episode was at the observatory. And that is an episode that you have just got to see because absolutely everybody did a fantastic job. So many good painters were left behind. It was just, I mean, of all the episodes I've ever seen in all the programs that we've covered, this one was just amazing. Any Anybody from that program could have won the whole competition. Of course, I was thrilled that she won, but many, many great pen painters were left behind. But I'm thrilled to see her here. I think she's, she, it's, it's a, she should, ah, here we go. I think she should be the winner, of course. You know, this is a really difficult landscape because you have some really strange shapes. You've got spheres, reflective spheres, and orbs. And if you look at the sky, she did such a really nice job in the sky. She didn't neutralize anything. There's a rose, there's a yellow, there's a cerulean blue. She left those colors near each other. She didn't blend them, so your eye stays activated. That is really smart painting. And that's what she did here off the Scotland coast. She had to push color, which really means she had to invent color. And in order to do that, she had to bring color into a very neutral palette. And I think she did it really, really well, because it's really a study in blues. And of course, what will make blue much more dynamic? Anything that leans toward orange or red. And she supplied that here. She's got reflections, she's got diagonals. It's a, She's a real plein air painter. You can tell she spent time. Now, one of the other uh, things that they do on this program is they're also given a separate commission when you reach the finals, which is, a painting, I don't know, I think you get to choose what you want to paint in this case. I don't know where this was, but it's a watercolor. So it looks a little bit like it might be a cliff walk kind of place. And there's a lot of triad work going on here. You can see a red, a yellow, and a, what do I want to say, red, yellow, blue is going on and she's letting those colors dance around instead of neutralizing them by creating one color for each form. And that, that creates a lot of excitement to the eye. Here we can see it really close up. Yeah, that's what, I'm a watercolorist, so I really respond to this because what you do is, you know, you put wet paint next to wet paint. You don't rub, you let the paint join each other. Now, here's her Battersea entry. I think this is much more exciting and dynamic than the one that we had before. She brought as much color as it was possible into the subject. And, you know, for an ugly subject, I think she really made it sing. Uh, it's got a great value range. She's got some really white whites, and then she's got some uh, all the way to very dark dark, you know, like black, all the way, the full range of value from um, white to black. And that creates interest. And, and look on the left, if you can see, there's like a cerulean blue or something greenish on the side there. there. What she did here was she invented color. It couldn't have been there. It must have been a feeling of temperature. She must have felt, oh, that's a little warmer there. Or I see a shape of something that feels warmer to my eye. What color can I insert there? It's, it's, it's just an, a real good example of an experienced painter. Here we come close up and we see some really good gestural work. She's working, you know, you can feel where her brush is just flicked easily along the surface. And she's working her whole arm here. She's not just working from the wrist down, she is all in. And look at how dynamic those reds are. And again, because they're against blue, you know, it just makes them even more impactful than they would be out of the tube. You know, everybody thinks that, you know, it's the tube of paint. It's, it's, yes, I guess it's the tube of paint, but then it's what you surround that color with that will decide whether or not you get the brightness that you want. You know, that has to do with brightness and dullness. And she's playing with temperature and brightness and dullness here. And I just don't think our first um, contestant was doing that. Uh, it's, it's just a different a different way of approaching painting. Uh, me personally, I think it's really important. Here's our next person. She works in pen and ink and, uh, you know, very studiously. 
a, you know, really small marks on paper, uh, kind of um, amazing in terms of patience and the amount of um, paper that she has to cover here. This is her entry into the program. And here's what she did that won her episode. I think many fine painters were, um, what do you call, uh, passed over on her episode. There were some great, great, oh my gosh, I'm remembering one right now. It's breaking my heart because it was so great. But they seem really, really excited about her. And, um, and I think the composition is really, really good. Uh, you know, it's always smart to get rid of a whole arch, cut it off if you can, make it dynamic. So there's the painting on the left that allowed her to be on the program and the painting on the right that won her episode. And I think the next one that might be coming up is um, the landscape, the one that you get to choose what you're going to paint or draw. Oh no, I forgot. That's right, this is the semi-final. Right, the semi-final again was that oil rig off the coast of Scotland, and this is what she did. It has an incredible amount of detail. Now, detail is not my thing. Maybe it's yours, but um, but it's you know it's fine. I just don't see how this ends up in a gallery and carries the day. Whereas this one, this was a landscape. This was a landscape that she did where she had more time. Uh, and got to choose what she was going to paint. This one is not just black and white. This one has a lot more gray in it. So I'm happy about that because it gives me much more of a value range than any work we've seen from her before. So you start to get a sense of distance and a sense of place. Whereas um, with her first two entries, I, I didn't get much of a sense of that. Now on the right, we see a little peek of what she did at Battersea, but we'll see more of that in a second. All right, here's the commission. Uh, well, it's not a, I, I think they call it a commission though, where you get to choose what you're going to paint. And this is that very long horizontal work that she did. Uh, I, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I don't know how to respond to it when it is in competition with colorists though. Here's some details. You know, she's really into the details. You know, I gotta take my hat off to her. She has an impeccable eye and she's just a really good drafts person. Of course, I'm missing color because um, because that's the world I live in. Now, here's the Battersea. Here's what she did that night. Uh, you know, it's it's great. It's it's a it's a great piece. Um, I always look when I'm recapping these episodes. I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I look at them as if is this a painting I want to have in my house or not? You know, is this a piece of art I want to purchase? And this one just doesn't meet the bar for me because I really respond to color. So um, I'm going with my favorite painter, which was the second person that we saw. But if you, if you really like monochromatic work and, and you like the, how dynamic her, her verticals and horizontals are, um, then yay, you'll, you'll, um, you'll be happy to follow her and, and find more of her work. So now we get to the part of the program where the judging actually begins. And it must be just so nerve wracking for them. First of all, they've been up all day, right? Because they're painting at night. Whereas in the past, they would have been up early in the morning and their day would have ended like around supper time. Well, geez, by now I would have been in bed, tucked up with my Netflix, very happy. So you gotta remember it's nighttime. We don't know if it's warm or cold. But here they are, on the left, we can see the paintings that they did as the commissions that they were assigned or that they chose. I think they chose them. And then what they did um, tonight at Battersea, just so we could get an idea if you really want to get a context of, of the three painters in competition against each other. I think this is a pretty good format to see it. But in a minute, we're going to see who the winner is. And the winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Well, I'm going to reveal the winner in just a moment, and then I'm going to show you the painting that she did, because I don't recap the last episode of the season, because that's all about the final painting and the final commission. Here's our winner. Our winner is the person who worked in black and white and did, um, you know, these, these pen and ink drawings throughout. You know, you kind of got a sense that the judges were really in love with her, and um, sometimes the camera will linger longer on someone that they favor. Anyway, here's the final commission, which what which is in Venice. I mean, now this breaks my heart a little bit because Venice is known for the light. I mean, just think about some of the old masters. Think about John Singer Sargent and what he did in Venice. <sighs> uh, 
Anyway, so when you think about that, yes, we have the traditional red curtain because, you know, for some reason in art, we have to have that and it will be drawn back in a dramatic way and we'll see the final commission. And for me, the final commission, uh, you know, it, it, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the final commission. It's just that it could have been done absolutely anywhere. I don't know how this is identified as being Venice in any way. Yeah, I mean, it's a great piece of work. But, um, yeah, I, I hope you really enjoy it. For me, once again, it was such a disappointment. You know, I, I know who I wanted to win. And, and, but, yay, we got to see the art. And thank you for joining me. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.